Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to show you how to install a CR Touch on an SKR Mini. I'm going to install on my SKR Mini V2 and we're going to walk through everything we need to do. Uh, it's going to be updating the firmware first. I'm going to use the standard uh, Big True Tech firmware to start with. Uh, then we'll go through the actual physical install process. Uh, then we'll go through uh, connecting it to the board and then uh, run through setting the Z offset and then adding the G29 command to Cura. Uh, if you have any question about the process as you're going, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or join us on Discord and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. So before we get started, I did want to make one note. Uh, I am going to be just kind of mounting my CR Touch off to the side next to the BL Touch uh, for this demonstration. Uh, it won't actually impact anything uh, because the process is all going to be the same. I just don't want to unmount everything off of this printer because uh, I have it dialed in decently well. Um, I will have to adjust my Z offset again, but that's fine. But it's not going to change the process. I'm just going to be mounting it off to the side here versus directly on the mount. I'll still show you the process of connecting it to the actual um, carriage on this printer here. Okay, so here's the CR Touch. Let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look to see what's all included with it. It's got this uh, protectant seal here, so I've got to get something sharp to cut it. All right, then we open it up. We've got instruction manual. Looks like mounting bracket here. Uh, the actual CR Touch which looks a lot different than your BL Touch, which I'll talk about that in a different video. I'll probably end up doing a video coming up pretty soon on the differences between the two and which one makes the most sense to buy. Um, other mounting bracket options. And then our cabling, some zip ties, and the screws that we're going to need here. So not that much in the box, but I guess overall, there's not that much to this. So let's go ahead and put this back together and we'll get started with the install process. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and grab the firmware. I'll link to this page in the description below. Uh, but once you're here, you'll go into firmware, uh, select the board version you're working with. I am using the 2.0. And uh, here we just wanna download the actual package that we need. All right, so we're gonna want the firmware-bltouch.bin file. I'll just right click on it and just uh, save link as and then I'll go ahead and save that to my download folder and then from there we'll want to go ahead and just copy that to the SD card All right, so here's the file we just downloaded we just want to rename this to firmware.bin and copy it over to your SD card now we'll go ahead and eject this and go put it in the printer all right, now we'll go ahead and put the SD card in the printer. If you have the TFT screen, you're not gonna see much because uh, it's not gonna actually connect to the printer until after it flashes the firmware, but we'll power it on and then make sure it took the firmware, then we'll go ahead and wire everything up. I did wanna make a note that most likely you're gonna end up using this mounted bracket right here, the larger of the three. Uh, the other two are meant for the Ender 3 V2 or the Ender 3 Max. Uh, this is gonna fit your Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, a CR10, etc. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and mount the CR Touch. So here's the mounting bracket we're gonna use. Uh, the CR Touch is going to come off of it like such. And then this is going to go on the printer uh, right where the fan duct cover is. So I'm gonna zoom in on the printer a little bit more, uh, but first thing we wanna do is go ahead and put the screws on this so we can get everything tightened up before trying to do it on the printer. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed the screws we're gonna use. I wanted to make a note that we have two different sizes. Um, this is gonna be the eight millimeter. These are the six. The six is gonna be used to connect the CR touch to the mounting bracket. The eight is gonna be used to connect that to the printer. All right, so there's only one way this can actually go on the CR Touch. If you try to turn it around or install it incorrectly, uh, it's going to be blocking uh, the port itself. So it's got to go this way so that that port is still exposed. All right, so now we're going to put the screws in. The screws go in from the bottom. If you try to put them in through the top, you're going to have issues because there's nothing to actually have them attached to. All right, now that those screws are in, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take off the two screws on the fan duct cover, and basically this is gonna mount right here. 
Um, it's important that, well, I guess you could make it work the other way, but it's much easier if you mount the CR touch on the bracket before trying to mount the bracket onto the printer itself, mainly because uh, these are mounting through the bottom, so it's gonna be hard to work with if you try to do it the other way. All right, so let's go ahead and take these screws off, and then we'll grab the eight millimeter screws that we'll use All right, now that we have those off and we have the screws, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this in place. Um, I like to put the actual bracket on the back and then uh, the fan duct cover uh, connected to that. It, I feel it's more stable. I've seen people challenge that and do it the other way. I actually had somebody call me out on that on the BL Touch before. Um, they're basically saying it's gonna affect the airflow, uh, which it doesn't because you've got the blower pushing the air directly at the nozzle and it's not like it's an airtight uh, such, um, enclosure or anything like that. All right, so we'll go ahead and put these in. All right, now we wanna go ahead and connect the wire to the CR touch. Uh, you can only plug this in one way, so it does make it pretty easy. Uh, the side with the grooves here uh, goes on this side. So it's basically gonna be white, black, yellow, red, blue. All right, with that connected, we'll use the zip ties it came with and kind of run the wire up and around following uh, the rest of the cabling. Now you just want to get these zip ties snug enough so that it's holding it in place but you don't want to try to get it to the point where it's too tight that it's kind of smashing the tubing a little bit. But I will zoom out a little bit so you can see more what I'm doing here. All right, so I've got the one zip tie in place here. I'm probably going to do another one here and then another one following down and then that'll be it for now. All right, then once those are in place, you can go ahead and clip the extra plastic off of the zip tie. And then at this point, I would follow whatever cable management practices you're using. If you have any tubes or anything like that that you're running the cables through or um, however you're running the rest of the cables, that's basically what I would do. All right, now what we need to do is uh, go ahead and open up this case down here so that we can get to the main board to connect that adapter and unplug the Z-Stop. So there are four screws. There's one up top right here, and then there's three on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and take this one off and then flip it over. Now this is flipped over, we can see the three screws. We've got one, two, three. We'll take those out really quick. All right guys, now that we got that panel off, we can go ahead and connect our CR Touch. I will make a note that overall, the adapter on the CR Touch has been better than the one on the BL Touch. They seem to be wired pretty consistently, um, but I always verify uh, the wiring before I plug anything in. The color on these are uh, opposite of the ones on the BL Touch. So the BL Touch blue was ground, uh, red, uh, just your positive, and yellow was your signal, and then um, black and white were for uh, the actual probe. Uh, this is reversed here. White is the ground, black is hot, yellow is signal, and then blue and red are for the actual uh, probe. Uh, but this is gonna just plug straight into the BL Touch port, like so. And then the instructions for the Creality board say to disconnect the Z-Stop. I found you don't really have to. It works just fine if you leave it connected. Uh, your choice there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, just verify your cabling. Make sure that you're plugging it in and that the pins are right. Uh, hopefully we don't start seeing some of the issues with the CR Touch that we see with the BL Touch where I've seen it probably shipped with 10 different cable models um, just because it's for different purposes. Uh, some of them are for the 8-bit boards, as an example. Uh, I've also seen some of them shipped with different cable lengths, too, where you had to extend them. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, this has been pretty easy to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put this back together, and then we'll go ahead and set our Z offset. All right, so the first thing I wanted to point out is, sorry for the crudeness of how the CR Touch is attached. I didn't want to modify uh, 
the, uh, the actual Fanta cover or anything that I have there because I plan on going back to the BL Touch for this board and using the CR Touch on my other printer. Uh, but this is the one that has the SKR Mini and the purpose of the video is to show that it can work with the SKR Mini and how to actually set it up. Uh, so now that you're at this point, to verify everything is at least stable, you're gonna wanna do an auto home. So I'm just gonna go to home, oh sorry, menu, movement and home and then home again. So that should home it, make sure that everything is working properly. And as you can see, uh, the auto home worked just fine. If you have a TFT, uh, and this is the first time flashing the firmware, you might get auto bed leveling disabled. Uh, to, do the, to fix that, you wanna go into menu, uh, go over to movement, go into uh, ABL and then you can turn it on. If it doesn't turn on, uh, what you have to do is go up to ABL and then uh, start and it'll go through and create the first mesh and then you'll save that. That way it's on and it'll use that mesh when it starts up. Um, again, if you're like me, you're gonna wanna just put the G29 command in Cura, which I'll cover here in a second. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, but that's gonna run the mesh at the beginning of every print so that it's consistent just in case things get knocked around a little bit or whatnot. And then once you go through this the first time, we'll wanna go ahead and set our Z offset. Uh, I can show you how to set it quickly, um, but I have a video that covers that process end to end. I think uh, if you don't know how to set the Z offset, I would recommend uh, checking that video out, which I'll link to below. Um, that'll go into the process in a little bit more detail without making this a 30 minute video. All right, then if we want to go to the Z offset, um, again, this is going to vary based on if you have uh, the TFT on your SKR or not. If you do, it makes it quite a bit easier, especially if you're using stock firmware. You'll be able to go into menu, uh, go into movement, ABL, and then Z offset, and then just adjust it accordingly. And then once you set your Z offset, you're gonna want to uh, jump over to Cura. I will uh, add the G29 command into that really quick, and then uh, you can go ahead and kick off a test print. And that's really all there is to it. All right, now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and add the G29 code to our machine settings in Cura. Uh, this will kick off the actual bed mesh every print. So if you go up to Preferences, uh, Configure Cura, go down to Printers, and then Machine Settings. From here, uh, right after G28, we'll just put in G29. Then I just like to make a note of what it's for, so I'm just going to put ABL. And that's really all there is to it. Now, it automatically saves that, so if you go back in, it's there. So at this point, only thing left to do would be to kick off a test print. And if the Z offset isn't right, you might need to make some adjustments to that just to dial it in. Uh, but from there, you should be good to go. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right, guys, so that covered the process of installing the CR Touch on the SKR Mini uh, without really having to make too many tweaks. Um, you can switch over to the Marlin firmware. I made a video covering that for the 422 board. Um, it's pretty much going to be the same for the SKR. You just grab that as your starting config file instead of the 422 one. Um, I'll link to that video in the description below. But if you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below. Thanks.